we started with these skipjacks around late 1800s uh, would be the first one that was built. And uh, up until probably 1980 would be the last one that was built. Built reasonably simple to uh, harvest uh, oysters in the shallows. In the early 1900s, that was probably a thousand. And now there's probably about 25 floating. I'm Captain Stony Whitelock. I'm a, maybe a skipjack enthusiast. I've been uh, trying to restore these old vessels and uh, save as many of them as we can. Everybody wants to be around this water. And uh, why not? Uh, I, I certainly don't fault them. I want to be here too. <laughs> there was 2,000 Indians on the banks of the Chesapeake Bay in the 1600s when the water was pristine and you could see 10 foot down and actually see the oysters on the bottom. Now on this watershed, there's 10 million people. We're getting all the pollutants from as far away as upstate New York. How many uh, sewer plants, water uh, plants, do you think there is between upstate New York and the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay? Big time farmers, uh, and they're trying to make a living just same as we're trying to do. Uh, phosphates are probably our worst enemy, uh, silt, uh, just pollution from man, uh, and we're not going to get that water quality back, back by raising oysters. We had a terrible storm, and they opened the dams, and it killed all the oysters in the upper bay. And now the state's talking about reducing the uh, oyster harvest by 26 or 28 percent this year and closing bottoms that we were working and uh, it's getting tougher all the time for these guys that are out here trying to scratch out a living. They're depending on the crab more each year than, than the oyster because it's not there. Maybe you can't get your groceries. Uh, if you go out here and work a couple of days a week. That's what we're hoping. Maybe a couple hundred bucks a day or something uh, is the most you're going to make. We just had our taxes done, and uh, from this year, we went $3,900 in the hole on our taxes. So, how long can you stand that? We have uh, two two days that we can shove along with our little push boat. When we're sailing, uh, we have to raise that out of the water so the uh, DNR can see us and uh, know that we're not under power. But uh, I believe it was 1960 they started, they gave us two days of power because we couldn't make a living with sail anymore. There's a few of the oyster rocks that are open just for sale. Uh, you wouldn't be able to go there and use your push boat just for sale. And uh, it, it's always been about conserving the oyster and that's why it's done by sale. The old boat that I have, the Mini V, it was built on the island here in 1906 and brought it home on its 110th birthday. I had to put a transom in it. I had to put a half a deck on it. So we go over the boat pretty thoroughly. Uh, if it's anything that is rotting away, which uh, 
we we have to decide how far we're going into that uh, cancer. Uh, we're, we got to decide where we got to stop. How's, how's money holding out uh, this, that, and the other? I did one, it's the Catherine over here on the island side of the bridge. And uh, we were four years uh, doing it. It was, it was a pretty big project. The boat was, uh, it was built in 1901. She's like a, a clipper, Baltimore clipper. I don't know if you ever noticed those bows or those uh, say the pride of Baltimore. His bow was just as proud as those. We had a lot of volunteer help that wanted, uh, as people still interested in saving these old boats and they want to see them as long as we can see them out here. We have this race here once a year uh, for the fleet and they come from all over the bay here and we'll have a race and a good day to fellowship and, and all of that. Captain Russell who owned the Catherine for many, many years getting up in years and uh, he decided he wanted to sell the Catherine. I, I told my wife, I said, just, just skip that Catherine. And I said, I, I really like it. I had retired, from, sold my business, and uh, she said, well, why don't you go ahead and get it? And uh, I wouldn't take that and I talked to my son about it. He said, well, you've always wanted one. Why don't you just go ahead and get it? And I wouldn't take that, so I'm out in the cemetery and I'm talking to Daddy. And I'm leaning on his headstone. And I said, Daddy, what do you think I ought to do about this old Catherine? Uh, she needs serious work done to it and all that. But I'm leaning on this headstone of Daddy's and talking to him, and uh, he said, uh, well, I don't know what you worry about. All you're gonna get is one of these old headstones anyway. And that's what I heard him say. I, I went and bought a boat the next day. <laughs> he was right. I ain't regretted it today.